Hi guys, uh, thanks. So to everybody here, my name is Patrick and I am one of the product VPs uh, working for Kiwi.com. And the area that I'm in charge of is uh, what we call a FinTech tribe. So what, what is the FinTech domain? Uh, quickly at the beginning, uh, it's quite simple. We need to collect payments from our customers. Otherwise we, we cannot really deliver the service that, that they're asking for. And we also need to be able to pay out our vendors uh, and get or procure the flight tickets that we are selling to them. Now you've, in the previous or in the introduction presentation done by Jake and Petra, you've seen several amazing numbers, number of searches, numbers of bookings, uh, number of airlines that we work with, uh, which is in multiple hundreds. And that's all impressive, but uh, with regards to FinTech where the complexity actually, or the fun actually comes in, is the fact that uh, our company, unlike, you know, the other big online companies is, is not marketing or broad driven, not just yet at least, but product driven. Meaning uh, we are able to do a lot of cool stuff to compile complicated and uh, very cheap and very convenient itineraries for our customers. That's why they buy them in the first place, right? But what that actually means is that we are not huge in any single particular market, but we are selling almost in every single market out there. And that's important to, to understand because uh, uh, literally we are selling in almost every single market out there. We, we are selling in more than 150 countries and that's what creates the challenges that actually FinTech is trying to, uh, is trying to mitigate or to handle. Now, what, that, what does that mean? That means that firstly, our ability to collect a payment uh, from a customer uh, is, is of essence as this is the end part of the, of the booking funnel and every customer that we manage to get to our checkout page we need to uh, be able to service further, meaning accept the payment from him or her and process the consequent booking that they ordered. Now, uh, given, given the structure of our traffic and, and, and the wide coverage, this, this poses a lot of challenges because we have people coming to us from Brazil. We have people coming to us from Russia. We, we sell in almost 50 currencies that, that you can check on our website. And uh, that, that actually creates a lot of, uh, lot of different regional uh, expectancies, a lot of different uh, tweaks and, and turns that we need to do in order to be able to accept every payment. And it also makes us uh, quite exposed to, to fraudulent attacks from people who try to steal, as flight tech is, is one of the industry that, uh, that is very popular with process. So what is the mission of our team then? Uh, it's, I would put it very simply, our mission is to make sure that we can accept payment from every single customer coming from anywhere and the customer we mean a legitimate customer and that that word in there is is very important so one piece first piece of our job is to make sure that we offer the relevant payment methods that we that we have local connections to the to this fast robust sometimes very rigid and old-fashioned banking system but it also means that uh, uh we we have to bring up the, the latest payment methods that are popular with the customers because that's what they like to use and they feel more secure about it they be more uh, if they feel it more convenient especially when a lot of customers are actually switching from desktop to to, to mobile devices where uh where different payment methods are actually popular than than on desktop uh now the subsequent part of of accepting the payment from customer is making sure that we don't accept payments from from uh fraudulent customers from from fraudulent gangs organizations that, that steal credit cards. The old, uh, it can be from, coming from the old fashioned way, like somebody picks, picks your pocket and steals a, steals a credit card, uh, up to the point where there are big data breaches and, and collections of, of different uh, sets of cards from different regions used by the fraud rings to, to buy flight tickets and sell them to end customers who might, even, who might not even know that, that they are buying uh, a stolen ticket, right? So in that regard, it becomes very complicated, again, for the same, uh, same reasons, uh, that I mentioned before, the sheer volume and the coverage that we need to handle uh, is, uh, is extreme and it requires uh, a very solid uh, infrastructure and actually highly qualified team to be able uh, to, to, to handle that. Now that's the first part of the equation. Now when, let's say that the customer managed to make the payment and we, we, we collected the money, now what do we do then? Then we need to procure the, the itineraries might sound a little bit easier than, than what it actually is because most of our itineraries are very complicated, booked uh, through different intermediaries, channels, airlines, websites, through APIs, through 
actually quite 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 a few different different means uh, because we, we need to get access or we want to get access to any content available out there and we want to be able to book it to pay for it and and to offer it to our customers uh, so with that being said, and with the, with the fact that we have uh, 800 plus carriers in our portfolio, we uh, we have to have an internal robust and routing, uh, sophisticated routing system that enables us to pick just the right payment method to book a specific carrier for a specific ticket. And we need to do all that, meaning accepting the pay uh, payment from the customer, running the fraud check, and actually booking and paying for the, uh, for the subsequent flying, uh, flight tickets in real time. So it literally takes seconds. Sometimes it doesn't. Obviously, there are always such cases uh, where we need to wait and in, in, in special way. But in general, this is what we are striving for, and this is our uh, our main uh, main objective. And that obviously creates a lot of lot of pressure on on our systems, on our uh, network, uh, on our ability to to uh, provide a seamless and smooth experience to our customers. So uh, with that being said, uh, the the things don't end there, right? Uh, and especially past year and a half, uh, the topic of reversals and refunds has become very, uh, very paramount because uh, of the sheer number of cancellations that we were seeing. And the cancellations are not gone. Airlines still, still keep canceling uh, the proportion of their fly flights that, that, that was unheard of uh, prior to, to, to Corona. So then our ability to handle refunds the right way, and this has been, you know, a very sensitive topic among, among our customers and in, in the industry in general, uh, is a very crucial domain where we are trying to achieve a uh, very, very simple thing. And that's to make sure that the customer understands uh, what's happening, what's going on, where the money is, uh, where it's coming from, how, how long is it, it is going to take. And uh, secondly, we are also working very hard on making sure that uh, we can handle as many customers as we can real time, uh, offering them solutions that we can given, given the circumstances and uh, making sure that they don't have to, you know, uh, pay too much attention to, to that cancellation in uh, uh, months, months to come. And we also try to turn the refund or reversal process, which is in general taken as a negative occurrence, negative event, and make sure that, that our customers perceive it as a, at least neutral, but uh, the focus on, on keeping them on our website and making sure that they can use uh, our other services. So that will be in a nutshell uh, what the FinTech does. And I was told to make it really quick as this is an engineering discussion. So I will stop here and give word to, to a dear colleague of mine, Tim, the engineering manager for Tintem. Uh, Tim, take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. And uh, thanks, people, for tuning in to listen to us talk about our dear and precious FinTech. And let's uh, move from the business and the why to the how. So my name is Tin. I'm uh, an engineering manager of uh, FinTech. You can find my website there if you would know, want to know more about me. But let's jump into the actual meat of the presentation. So we'll walk through the high level diagram of our teams and stuff we work through. It's not complicated, don't worry. It's uh, just something I've written to kind of guide the conversation. We have uh, three teams in FinTech, three engineering teams. We have many more specialists and product, uh, but three engineering teams that own many services in an a la microservice architecture. We'll zoom in on the graph, check some challenges and leave a couple minutes extra at the very end for your questions if you find any. So. It may look complicated, but we'll go through it quickly and uh, see what's there to see. We're going to start with the acquiring team, which is a team that uh, concerns itself with taking money from our customers in a very painless, efficient way that makes those customers happy to come and return to us again. Uh, so the acquiring team has uh, a very a uh, simple list, not simple, a very straightforward list of responsibilities. The first one going into the fraud checks and keeping the safety of our customers very high. So the small diamond top right means that we use a lot of third party service for this, in this case, Forter, that I'm not going to go deep into discussion about, 
but you can Google it or those of you who have financial background can know something about it. More interesting is the payment service directive that uh, was all the news the last couple of years in Europe and wider as uh, the European Union has made uh, some directives, some instructions to all payment service providers that they need to follow a long, long document that boils down to protecting customers more and better. That's the most uh, customer centric aspect of it. This comes through mainly through 3DS2 that many of you have already experienced and have been challenged by that tries to make sure that the person buying things or paying for things is the actual owner of the money of the funds. It's a strong customer authentication that's essentially very posh multi factor and authentication based from your bank. And uh, it's based on three main aspects possession knowledge and inheritance biggest problem here was implementing these making sure that we put this to be as effortless for the customer as possible. After all, if you're using your own card and you're not a fraudster, you want it to be effortless. And you want to be safe as well. That creates a tough uh, couple of things, but it works out in the end. So after that, we jump down to currencies and payment configurations. Uh, you can see on the diagram that these are things that interact with clients and booking. So these are the things that uh, start your journey when you want to journey with kiwi.com. So yeah, currencies uh, are important and much more important when you work at a larger scale. And a good, maybe the best example was a story that happened to us in our early days of Skypicker that I put the uh, Ian Fleming's famous title from Russia with love as a header, as we've managed to lose uh, synchronicity with rubles, thus having a great, great currency rate back in the 2013, 14. And uh, that currency rate caused us to skyrocket in the Russian market. What it didn't cause to skyrocket was our margins and our earnings, as we were losing a lot of money there. And uh, we found out that when you start trading with every country in the world, you need to really pay attention that you're trading in the correct currency rates. Otherwise, uh, you get problems. And this, these problems were also a reason why we focus on having configurations that are easy and straightforward to change, even for our specialists, to, so we can control and measure payments without developers having to be woken up in the middle of the night. So we try to create these configurations that are very quick, very effective, and that don't create a headache for people working on them. So yeah, after that, we jump into acquiring, which is without going into too many details, simplicity is key here. Less you notice it, the better. You don't want to have problems paying. You want to pull out your credit card, have your flight, travel, not worry about it. More options we provide, more customers we get. Obviously, if you have your favorite uh, payment method, you want to use it and keeping things running smooth and your fees low as we let you use your favorite tools keeps everybody happy. This is integration of Apple Pay. This is things that these are things Patrick has mentioned already. So yeah, then we go to the hot topic of refunds that uh, faces clients, in this case, refund terms and the state. And uh, yeah, coronavirus hit us all hard. We're part of the travel industry. It was difficult. And we cannot refund, we could not refund everything immediately because it's business. Some funds come in, some funds come out. If you stop everything and start returning everything, we would not get to even 10% of our customers. It wouldn't work. So yeah. We're trying to keep this transparent. We want this to be open for you, for our customers, for our partners, for everyone, and to try to keep the terms open and exactly let everybody know what they're get going into. In that case, we're going uh, with uh, refund configurations, different policies, and things that our developers enable for our business people to configure. So we know, and the customers know, what's the state of the industry. 
and so we can commit to it once the customers see and know what is uh, their right that we can hold up to it and make it uh, great from all sides of the equation. Next is the processing of those refunds that do come and uh, need resolving and this interacts mostly with our automatic auto booking systems. And this is just processing through our refunds in our queues in order of priority and efficiency. So our bookings are multi, uh, multi airline, multi different uh, modes of transportation. We have we mix and match things. This is very hard to refund on its own. It's a very complex problem that our developers have to solve. We need to manage the expectations from both sides of the table and uh, get uh, the automated systems to solve this as efficiently as possible so our so our customer support does not get overloaded as i mentioned a bonus mention i'll mention that the credits incentivization where we try to create a credit system for our customers that benefits all parties and skips the processing part by letting the customer interact with us earn something extra and stop waiting Next, we are going to move to the payout team, the team that interacts with our business partners, with partners that provide us with uh, flights and the airlines themselves. And we'll start with the payment routing that interacts with auto booking again, that works with uh, things that, uh, that we use to pay for the flights we give you. Massive Master Router, MMR, is a very uh, enthusiastic name. And it's a router that calculates and manages our magic, let's call it that, to optimize the cash flowing out of uh, Kiwi.com. So if we manage to make the payments for your flight optimal and uh, great value, then we bring that value to the customers and we manage to compete on the market much better. We want to pay in best terms for ourselves, for our customers, and the more choices and methods we have there, the optimization is better. We get that we get this ability to optimize and root by using our financial instruments, and we use those in outgoing payments, where we try to combine our specialists and our systems to use uh, uh, tools to create more cards, payment methods, and other tooling to exactly create the best possible way to acquire flights. This all requires management in a central place, which is the outgoing payment uh, systems. And finally, and but not the least, uh, we have the transaction parsing and automated accounting that is solved by a service called Trap. And uh, we basically want to create uh, a paper trail from the payment of a customer to the payment out to the airline. Money going out needs to match money coming in. We connect the dots of our cash flows. We create systems that uh, have clear audits, but this is difficult due to diversity. Believe it or not, some people send us reports on paper in today's age. Uh, it's hard. Some send us XMLs and actual computerized formats, which makes it super easy. But yeah, we need to make sure this works and we need to optimize humans as well as computers to make sure all, all this accounting works well. Thanks, thanks for looking with me through our system. I try to keep it vague and high level so you don't get uh, your attention burned. And it's quite technically focused. I didn't go into depth, but feel free to contact and reach out with questions. Uh, you can apply through the web or reach out to me if you're interested to become our colleague. We have some open spots. And uh, yeah, we don't require a financial experience from our developers, but it's a bonus. It's something you teach on the job. Thanks again. And uh, we'll have a minute or two for questions now, I hope. Yeah, that sounds about right. And we actually have quite a few interesting ones. So first one is by Jan, who's asking, are people who are good at hacking sites like Kiwi.com, uh, in parentheses, uh, FinTech, uh, interesting for Kiwi? Uh, absolutely people who can uh, figure out our security, who can work with our security and uh, help us improve it. It's uh, very relevant for them to join us and make sure that others cannot do the same. 
and we have a security team where we're accepting people. We have a program that we can invite uh, people who are interested in white hat hacking to join and help us improve. And yeah, we have the classic fintech development and fraud that uh, they could take their hand at. It depends whether they think more in hacking as in uh, hacking the credit cards and figuring out uh, vulnerabilities there or the systems, but we have several open spots here and we have a whole security team dedicated to this. Thanks for awesome. this great question. Definitely, thank you, thank you guys as well. Unfortunately, we have just ran out of the time.